You had a fairy tale season last year, national championship. You're the most outstanding player of the tournament. To what extent is this just a continuation of that terrific story? It is. It is. These last three or four months have been, you know, crazy. Not only for me, but for my, for my, like, for my family, for my friends, and everybody. But um, no, just is just kind of just another thing that's. Um, another blessing I see it as. You had a wonderful collegiate career with the Jayhawks. Your head coach, Bill Self, called you, quote, unselfish, thoughtful, conscientious, a wee guy, and said he will add value from a culture standpoint overnight. How would you describe yourself, not only your personality, but also your game for us here at Northeast Ohio? Uh, I can shoot the ball. Um, I feel like I, I'm a, I'm a, you know, a all three level scorer, um, and I can defend too. So, and, and I compete. I compete. That's the biggest thing too, is just to compete. And um, I hate losing. I always want to win. I always want to win everything. So. So do we, you're in the yes, right place. Yes. <laughs> Kobe, I know you were thrilled that Ochai Abaji was available at number 14. You went out and got him. Why the excitement? Every step of the way, he's had tremendous growth. Um, now he's grown himself to national champion, outstanding Final Four player, uh, Big 12 player of the year. When you add the skill set, the character, um, all those ingredients, the winning, uh, when he was sitting there at 14, it, 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 he was the guy for us. You mentioned that shooting piece. What is that fit going to look like for you, Kobe? You know, it's something that's different that we don't necessarily have uh, in terms of having that off-ball threat mm -hmm. um, that can really move without the ball, that can shake up from ball screens, that can sprint baseline and pop out on the other side and really put a lot of pressure on the defense. Uh, we have really good ball dominant uh, play creators, and this gives him even more space. You know, his skill set is, is unique and it's different for, from what we have. You mentioned that he comes off of the national championship, comes off of that most outstanding player award. To what extent did that winning pedigree play into the selection? Well, it's that. It's also, you know, think about the Kansas basketball program and, and the great Bill Self, uh, the head coach for that program and what they mean. You go to that program, you're going to get great coaching. You're going to be in an adverse uh, environment because it's it's loud. It's a great league. Um, and, and so he's been through adverse situations uh, and he's grown tremendously and he's been well coached. We talked about the offensive side, great wingspan, nice size. What can we expect on the defensive end of the floor? Yeah, so usually, you know, you think about great shooting shooters, you don't think of them as having great length and, and defensive ability. And that's what was so intriguing about Chai is, uh, you know, his defensive prowess, beating ball screens, shooting the gap with his with his um, with his length, uh, big hands. Uh, and so he brings a, you know, a dynamic skill set on that side of the ball as well, which I know JB's excited about. For you and the rest of the front office, uh, to what extent was it nice to have more of a normal draft process finally this season? <laughs> Uh, you know, it's interesting, it, you know, with a little silver lining of, of, of just missing the playoffs, which was bittersweet, was that we got to keep the pick. And it gen you know, generated a lot of excitement and energy from our scouting department of how do we find uh, the right fit at 14. Uh, who's going to complement the group that had a remarkable year, uh, that has a great runway ahead of them. But, but really exciting for us and, and sort of a silver lining, if you will, to, to add a talent like this to this roster. Uh, one of the things that we do when we bring guys in for the pre-draft is we sit them down and we watch film with them and we have conversations about basketball. You know, his ability to carry a conversation in a room with a bunch of old men, <laughs> you know, he did a great job. Um, we felt like he had the personality to fit with our group. You talk about his sophistication. To what extent do you attribute that to the fact that he played four years in college for Bill Self in Kansas? He went back to a program and continued to get better every single year, which means he's uh, willing to receive coaching. Uh, and from our standpoint, that's huge. You know, you see his improvement and we believe that he's going to continue to improve um, because he has that type of work ethic. He's going to play against better players and with better players. Generally speaking, when you hear that about three or four year players coming into the pros and, and maybe being at their peak, what's your reaction when you hear that? It's laughable, like that? to be honest with you. It really is. Um, you know, when you've got a guy who is 22 years old and you think about the length of these guys' career nowadays, you know, it, it's we see the best players in our league get better every single year. So to say a 22-year-old can't get better uh, is laughable to me. Is your approach any different as a coaching staff to a 22-year-old like Ochai as opposed to a 19-year-old that we've been seeing over the last couple of lotteries that you've been bringing in? Well, what you got to do is you got to get to know them, and that's what mo is most important. Uh, you have to have an understanding of where each individual is at because all those guys are different. You have to figure out, you know, how they best learn, how they best receive information. Uh, but all that comes down to is how we build relationships, earn trust and respect. 
Kobe Altman has been raving about the fit of Ochai. Why? He brings something that is that can be weaponized, so to speak. Uh, he brings something that improves the guys that took huge leaps for us last year. And he makes the game easier for those guys because he can be a disruptor and a distractor on both ends of the floor. How about on the offensive end? I'm sure the shooting piece is one part of it, but only one part, right? Yeah, it's his activity. Uh, that's one of the things that you notice when you watch him is he's hard to guard because very rarely is he standing still. And, you know, when you are able to move with speed and make shots off that speed, the defense always has to be aware of where you are. So now you're thinking about, you know, uh, Darius and Jared or Evan pick and roll where, you know, two guys are worried about him coming off of screens. Now you've got the action to happen uh, and where's the help going to come from? So there's just a lot of things that you can do with him and be creative with him. The wingspan, his size, what can this man do on the defensive end that you've seen so far on film? Uh, well, he competes at it first and foremost and he takes pride in it and that's the start. Um, you know, with his size, his length, his athleticism, like he has the ability to guard multiple positions. And again, go look at uh, the deeper and deeper you got into the playoffs, you had individual guys who could guard multiple positions. So being able to have the, you know, more of those guys is gonna be helpful for